Anyway, I like how, uh, you know, uh, Callahan's like, tell uh, Susanna what I said. And Roland's like, I will, what does he say? I will make sure to tell her the position you have put us in, pair. <laughs> oh, so so self righteous. <laughs> yeah, I tell him. I tell her. Uh, we have signs that when Mia's coming. And actually, there was a part, I think rubbing her forehead was one of the signs, right? Mm hmm. Uh, and there was a part where she was she did I can't remember what they were doing she was going to rub her forehead she was like making herself stop she's like no you don't feel that there's nothing there yeah right that'll make yeah, it like, go away when yeah like you can at the end, I was like it's getting to the point where that really needs to not be a thing because it's like you're about to have a basically a gunfight <laughs> yeah well that's yeah that's true you need some that's super focus point. coming up here really <laughs> soon so and she's gonna be the one of the people throwing the plates, and like I don't know how that works, but I don't. Like, I feel like Mia can't just step in, and also wouldn't. <laughs> what if Mia takes over halfway through the fight? Right. Oh, God. Like if she, what if the what if the chaps threatened, and like she's like, nope, we're out of here. <laughs> Have they called it the chap yet? Crap. I, she, I thought she. Did. I don't remember. I can't remember if she I, did or not. Well, Mia. I, I, she but has. Okay. Yeah. I thought when we first met Mia, she was calling it the chat. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Anytime we get her point of view in like the castle thing. I feel like I haven't had that in a while. We only had like one. Two. Because the second one was bad. The first one was basically normal. I don't want to say good. But... They're both bad. <laughs> They're both terrible images. Well, that, but I mean. No, I mean, in her mind, she like the first one was like she was in the castle in the banquet, but then in the second time we were with her, she like everything was getting rotten and it wasn't like the illusion was was breaking down or something. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, your man Jesus seems to me a bit of a son of a bitch when it comes to women. Roland said, "Was he ever married?" The corners of Callahan's mouth worked. No, but his girlfriend was a whore. <laughs> Like, wow, a priest said that? Uh, right. <laughs> you know, you just called your... your. Wait. Oh, Mary Magdalene. I guess she's nothing to the Catholics, right? Yeah, not Mary. Well, you just said your God was screwing a whore. It can't be... Uh, no. <laughs> no <never mind>. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I'm just, I think I'm just going to not finish that and move on. <laughs> Stupid Catholics. Um, so, um, I forgot where I was because now I have to move on. Oh, here, schmoozing is called Kamala, it's their word for damn near everything. Oh my god, do we see the paragraph? I was telling you about that. There's a paragraph where it says all the different versions. I was of listening to that on the audiobook, I'm like, I get it. <laughs> I know, Kam Kamala, this, and, and if it's a verb, it's this, and if it's an adjective, and if it's a Past present participle. Uh, yeah. I was just picturing the word fuck the whole time because it's like the same kind of thing. You can use fuck for everything. Yeah. Noun, verb, adverb. You can do that with Google and Amazon just about now, too. I Amazoned it. I Googled it. <laughs> um, well, where are we at next? I think I'm on the next chapter. I was trying to find where we were. Andy. Uh, oh, by the way, there is women, uh, excuse me, young ladies in the Caleb. They're all over the place, apparently. Uh, Andy told Jake, I guess this was a horoscope, that there was a young lady pining for him. <laughs> I like how he got all bashful, too. He was like, I, I don't, I don't want to know that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. They call them so, as you will, so. What does that mean? Is that like yeah. sigh, I guess? Yeah, is that like okay. sigh for like. Wait, what? well, Andy's not young by any stretch, right? Um, but yeah, he was, he was rushing. Um, but anyway, there, there was a bunch of, uh, they were talking about all the, the women and the, the girls in the different parts of the cow. Like, well, Jake does have options. I guess that means Eddie has options. Well, not the same options. Eddie. But if there's a bunch, 
Well, I didn't mean with the girls. I think came out wrong. He's married anyway. We, <laughs> we were talking last time how Eddie is who, who, wait a minute. Susanna is Eddie's only option, but Susanna has other options. Oh, oh um, yeah, that's true. So I think, well, he could have other options, but I think that would require living in the cow, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. Eddie also doesn't strike me as a, like having a wandering eye <laughs> now that he is married. He's, uh, I would say, the opposite, fiercely loyal almost. Exactly. Um, well, it's, yeah, so there seems to be more people around than we necessarily than it seemed like at first. Well, yeah, but this is way after their trek from the beach. Like, they're at, basically at End World. That was weird. Like, so it's like the beach and what, the, the sea on the one side and then like woods on the, or desert and then woods on the other side? Um, like, they got yeah. all the geography going on there. Yeah. And then it took I'm a just train to the damn... Topeka. <laughs> Did they go from Topeka to the how I guess they did, huh? Well, no, well, the the pink ball spit them out on the other side of the. See, uh, why did that take them where they were supposed to go? That I feel like is flag. So I don't know. The, the flag one? has also been helping Roland, helping sort of all along. So it's so confusing. Huh? Yeah, I can't. You keep you it's say flag. Like Sorry, I'm Walter. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know, but he, he's Walter in my head. Um, I guess he's not flag in this story. Um, didn't become flag yet. I think he became flag later on. Didn't he? Is he flag yet? <laughs> oh, they did call uh, him flag. Oh, that's because they retrofitted it. Yeah, but like it all just feels like one giant trap because, like, from the beginning, the prophecy said that Walter or er, that Roland needed the man in black to get to the tower and it's like uh, i don't know i mean yeah he's got enemies i guess but like ultimately it's still like not that hard <laughs> Who? it's like we know the crimson king is stuck at the tower and if walter is trying to help him get to the tower like maybe roland shouldn't be so gung-ho to get there yeah Is Walter helping him get to the tower? Uh, by all accounts, from what my perspective, <laughs> because he's the one that um, told him all of the stuff when they have that sit down at the beginning, and then you you don't want to say it, did you? What do you mean? I don't remember. Say what? Pal palaver. Halliburton. No, no. Oh, yeah. Is that what they called it? I can't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. Hold yeah. on, oh, uh, airplane. Um, like, he was the one that told him the information about the doors. <laughs> and he's, uh, I'm assuming it's him. I mean, I guess we don't know. It feels like he's connected to the doors, too. And, like, why the heck would, would he, like, Eddie and Susanna and Jake only help Roland. I guess the what? first time Jake was there, it was supposed to be a trap because he was like, "Oh, Roland will save him instead of chasing after me." Which <laughs> oh, he was totally a trap. That was that was the whole point. He put him there. The second time, like, I don't know where the doors came from, but you know, Walter knew about them. It feels like they're connected to him. All they did was bring in a team to help Roland get his get to the tower faster. That's what I'm saying. I think... I don't... I think Walter knows about the doors. I don't think he has any control. I didn't get that impression. I'm not saying... That was more know. like the, the white or, the, you know, the but turtle why? or whatever the hell. What makes you say that? Because I don't feel like bringing Eddie and Susan and Jake is something... Then why Walter would Walter would... tell him all about them? Because maybe he can't stop. I don't know. I, I don't have the answer. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. That's why I'm saying it feels like a giant trap or something. I think, like, Walter's just having fun. Like, he just, <laughs> he's just enjoying himself. I, I, who the hell knows what he's up to, man? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't trust him. I don't 
No, if if he's helping them and it seems I don't like think he he's is... helping them because he's on their side, but right. I think uh, like I don't know. He's not he hasn't been anything more than like a nuisance so far. And if anything, yeah. he's been a help. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he and I mean again, this is just what I know, but I feel like he's just kind of an agent of chaos. And he's looking out more for himself than anyone else. So he's just kind of like keeping his options open. Like, I'm gonna help here, but if the Crimson King gives me like specific instructions, I need to follow what he says just in case he's the one that ultimately wins. It's fair. Seems risky. Yeah. Because he, he was definitely working for the Crimson King as John Farson. Yeah. I think he's definitely a <laughs> employed by Crimson King Incorporated, but <laughs> Sombra so, Corporation. Right, yeah. He probably owns Sombra. <laughs> um it seems like a risky maneuver to to possibly be subverting your boss like that and wouldn't he know? This is why my maybe, theory is I mean maybe he's more of a contractor. Together. Yeah, maybe like maybe he's like a he many faces. Maybe yeah. the Crimson King doesn't know about all of them. Is that possible? It seems illogical. But... Well, it's very possible because the Crimson King can't go anywhere, apparently, so... Yeah, but that doesn't... So? <laughs> he can't influence anything from his room? Well, or obviously from his... he can, but that, what I'm saying is it's possible that Walter is up to things he doesn't... I, he may not know about. It's possible. This, it, it does... It doesn't... I don't know. Walter's, but that wasn't again. my theory to begin with, anyway. I was saying the opposite. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, Walter's a big mystery. It's just another mystery, I think, uh, including his name. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going there because that has a flag is a mystery too. Uh, it's been a mystery from like the first page. Yeah. So like when we met him, Roland was chasing him because of his mom, right? That was the yes. whole thing. Yeah. And then he was just fucking with him the whole time because he was behind him when <laughs> Roland was right. chasing him. And then he fi- he catches up to him, chasing, quote-unquote. Right. So he let him he... catch him, finally. Exactly. And then told uh, him everything that was about to happen. Right. So he's just having fun. He's just playing with him. It's possible. It's possible. It's just got it. The way I see it, telling him everything is bad. I don't know how. But it can't be. He's just helping him. They're, they're, him telling them has to be bad for them somehow. Oh, I know. I'm not saying any of his intentions are good. I'm saying it's all a trap. Right. But what the hell? But it doesn't seem that way. Right. Because, you know, it's a good trap. <laughs> I guess so. I like how when Jake's like, well, what happened if all everybody died and Andy had to raise the kids? <laughs> I was like, oh my God. God, <laughs> that would be awful. Um, the kids uh, would probably die. <laughs> right? They would have many other functions. I think he says that. They'd probably die within six months. <laughs> or, or no, he says, I got it right here. He, they would probably die within six months. Well, die or turn into the weirdest kid in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he's talking about uh, Aaron, Tien and Zalia's baby. He's like, well, he'd either right. die or turn into the weirdest kid in the universe. I'm like, you know, that, <laughs> that made me laugh. Because I could, I could see, totally picture when he said that, like, like a little baby robot. Like if yeah, if Andy raised a kid, it would be like a little robot human. It was kind of a funny picture. Oh, yes, um, I'm sorry. Bye. Real quick, I was trying to catch up to where you were. Um, Roland says that one of the reasons I think he's okay with not aborting it is because he thinks Mia will prevent it anyway. Say it again. He thinks Mia will prevent it if they try to. Try, uh, try to what? Try to abort the baby. Callahan thinks that. Roland thinks that. Roland thinks that. Uh, uh well, no, we don't need to go back to that. I'm just saying I saw that real quick. Does Callahan know about Mia? Well, he he's in a tet, right? Does that he know? This is when they're talking to each other. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Well, and Roland was the one that told him like you're now basically in charge of Susanna and you have to watch her like hot to let me know if Mia's 
coming. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, and he tells her the sign or tells him the sign. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, well, if nothing else, it would probably give you a good way to bring her forward, right? Maybe they should do that. Well, <laughs> like a, why do you want to bring like, her forward though? Well, like face that shit, like they did with Detta and Odetta. But like bring um, her out and be like, okay, now what's up? There's no castle. There's nothing. There's no chat. You don't exist. Go away. <laughs> but there's no. There's no door to show. I don't. And Susanna knows about Mia, right? Actually, I don't, I don't remember where he left off on that. Yeah, but Mia's never been around anybody else. It's just been Mia in her head, in her little fantasy world, while everybody else is sleeping. Well, we don't know where she hey, came unless, from. Unless we're counting. Well, I mean, what do you mean? She came from her head. Or do we well, not? She could have come mean? from the baby. Or come with the baby. Oh, the demon baby. Why its own mommy? Mm-hmm. It's true, mommy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Well, I guess the uh, is Callahan right? I'm. I'm trying to work my way through that. I don't know that. My whole point was that it just again. I think it leads more to why Roland was like, whatever. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Maybe that's more what he was doing. He was like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to keep that secret, even though I said we're not keeping secret. <laughs> um, we had a plate throwing demonstration, which I was kind of like, okay, whatever. So some of them right. are better than others, and moving on. <laughs> they, I didn't yep. really care about that part. Susanna's really good, shocker. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew going in it was going to be Susanna, Eisenhart, and everybody else. And that's kind of the way right. it was, right? Yeah. Okay. So we know who's throwing the plates. Um, so it was to the Rocking Bee. What was the place in Hambry called, like, by the drop? Where were they staying in Hambry? Was, wasn't there somewhere out there called the Rocking Bee? Rockingham or Rock? Yeah, I think it was something like that. Or maybe where the Horsemen's Association was, the, the, the ranch. The, I thought the, we saw Black and D before. But, it sounds you know, like I said, all the, all the times where I talk like the Dark Tower, I finally figured out I'm just talking like the Kala, so. <laughs> if it does you. I was um, going to say, do you can? <laughs> <laughs> if you can it. <laughs> Have we met Kenneth yet? I think so. Do you can it? Yeah. Ali, you're still uh -huh. here, right? Quiet. Uh -oh. um, she hasn't said anything in a while. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even ask what happened anymore. Anyway. Uh -huh. uh, you already know. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. Um. Well, yeah. Um. I was. I was actually saying, like, yeah, because uh, we definitely had learned. Do you can because I was like, yeah, that's an actual word in Scotland. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Oh, that. can it? Or can? Yeah. Like, do you can? Do you understand? I did not know that. Is that where he says we should just buy the damn lot? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, yeah. And he's saying that because you can't talk to people when you're toe dash, right? Yes. I think so. Okay. Well, they don't, yeah, people don't see them. And they can walk through walls and stuff like that. They're not really yeah. there when they're towed at. Uh, like, it's like when it comes right down to it, Roland, Enrico Balazar is the kind of guy I wouldn't mind killing twice. <laughs> okay, but I had a problem with that because if Balazar <laughs> dies 10 years before Eddie, like, doesn't that change the whole tra trajectory of Eddie's life? And, like, wouldn't Eddie maybe not? I don't know how that would work. It seems like a paradox, but. Yeah. But Eddie already, I guess Eddie already killed him later on in life. So, so he already has that memory. So if he goes back and kills him again before any of that happened, I guess he, I, I don't, then none of the other stuff happened, but he's still going to remember it. So that's where you get those paradox things. Because uh, you're right. If he, killed, if he killed him a long time ago, then the whole plane ride never happened. Right. <laughs> but he remembers the plane ride. So it did happen. It, it, you know, it's it's like the green card man. He created another universe when he did that. 
<laughs> or the I'm yellow card. Maybe. <laughs> See, this thing just keeps becoming relevant when you didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. So, like when he killed, if he goes back and kills Balazar ten years ago, then he creates another world because he can't have the both uh, realities existing in the same world. Now, one thing I forgot is Eddie does say, which I kind of found confusing, that um, they're in the, he thinks it's the 19th level of the Dark Tower when they're in that mm. part, so it's like maybe not the same world. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Boy, so that daddy's all about to... I haven't heard Allie in a while. Right. Okay. Just, just check it. Um, no, I'm, I'm still here. I'm just trying to finish getting ready too. Oh, I just mm-hmm. make sure you didn't time out. What time you got to go? Uh, like three forty-five. Okay. So, We've got I'm just not, here. I don't plan on being anywhere near three forty-five. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I block off two hours for the podcast to be on the safe side. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what I usually do. So, anyway. Where were we? I forgot. Um, I was just oh. saying that maybe this isn't the same world that Eddie came from because he says he's on. He says he thinks it's the nineteenth or level nineteen of the Dark Tower when he's there. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> how many levels are in a Dark Tower? I don't know. You think there'd be a lot Not, more on the? Uh, I'm I'm thinking ninety nine. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so he's not even halfway up. Shit. Well, what are levels ago. like? Are these different universes? <laughs> I mean, maybe? no, maybe. Because ninety nine feels pretty finite. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, wouldn't there be an infinite number of levels? Right. And I think it's a dynamic situation based on what I just said, because you're creating new universes all the time. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Right, no wonder that fucking yellow card man was stressed out. Um, <laughs> is this the first we saw Midworld, right? Oh yeah, we already saw mid, nothing but strikes. Nothing oh, but strikes, it. yeah. I was like, wait, oh no, we saw the end of one of the chapters. Yeah, I'm so glad I bought that shirt. Um, Roland opened his purse and took out the bowling bag. So. Roland's purse is a lot bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was um, like one of those magic things. Uh, is, oh, is that what's going on? Purse. Like a yeah, isn't that, that like impression. a? Type? It's so it's actually like a little coin purse the size of my hand, and he just pulled a bowling bag out of it. Then uh, I don't remember a hundred percent, but that was what I thought. <laughs> isn't there like a cartoon where he does that? He pulls out like a lion and puts it back in the bag. He's like, nope, not that one. Tom and Jerry, probably. <laughs> no, I think it was uh, the Disney movie. Oh, Family Sword Guy. The Stone. Oh, was it Family? Oh, well. well. Mary Poppins. Well, yeah. I'm thinking of Sword in the Stone. You said animated. Yeah. You um, maybe. Um, like when they're having the. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I was picturing. Wherever the hell that's from, that's what I was picturing. Like, oh, not that one. But take this out. I was like, what happened? Like, it could be dangerous to stick your hand in there, right? <laughs> That's what you pull out. Uh, anyway, nothing but strikes the midworld lane. Mm. The rose is like the anti crimson king, right? So it's, it's the good versus the bad. I guess it's a funny image of <laughs> rose versus well, crimson king. <laughs> red on red crime, right? Um, red. Maybe it's a white rose. Wow, I didn't even ever put that together, that they're red roses, and he's the Crimson King. <laughs> uh, me neither, until <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> so, I don't know if it means anything. <laughs> there are no coincidences, just remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, after, so, after hearing Grandpa's story, he thinks that there's nothing supernatural about how they find the wolves. Is this because of those 19 damn words, or is this... I'm assuming, I think it, yeah. 
because grandparents' story didn't really tell us how they found anybody, right? They were just intercepted them on the road and tried to take them down. I think is how that went, wasn't it? Well, I think he's just saying, like, this is me telling you without telling you still, because it's going to be a mystery. <laughs> like, after Grandpa's story that you don't know yet. <laughs> I know. Bastard. Um, I like when they're looking out over the, uh, I guess, the down on the Cala, and they see, like, he, and he's, like, basically, like, it makes me think of I Bolt King. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, oh. I'm still mad that we don't talk about the Finney paradox, but fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who, Eddie? What do you mean? Well, because cause when he mentions it, he's like, too bad you can't rely on the Finney to take everyone out this time. And it's like, yeah, do you remember, like, not that long ago when you were all standing in the Finney, too? Like, <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what you meant, but that paradox, I think, uh, yeah. uh, I think we discuss that in length, then it makes not a damn bit of sense. <sighs> they used the Finney to kill everybody in Hambry and then went and slept in the Finney while he told the story about everybody in Hambry getting <laughs> killed by the Finney. Yeah. yeah I mean, it makes sense, right? Oh, sure. sure. <laughs> do, do sex. Don't let uh, uh, don't let uh, facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> um Dickens, Eddie's thinking of uh, Vanita Screw. Right. All right. Roland, if I don't make it back, take care of Suze. Well, your job is to make sure I don't have to. <laughs> and Eddie's like, no, no, my job is to protect the rose. Like, whoa. Oh. He threw Susanna out in the cold real quick, didn't he? Well, that's what I was saying. Go ahead, sorry. Well, no, he's like, with me, uh, attached to her if you might think that like there's a limited amount of time where she's going to be around anyway oh jesus is it eddie that talks about how it doesn't end well for the mother when demon babies are born or is that kelly or is that roland That's probably not kelly that was, yeah i thought that was roland i mean maybe eddie's working on <laughs> distancing himself from the relationship <laughs> well, I, I don't know I... I honestly think it's more that he's becoming like Roland, where his focus is the tower. Um, like, above I, yeah. everything else. Yeah, I think it's more, yeah, like, look, we're, we're in it for the tower, too. You don't have to pick us with you. Kind of, because so. He made a comment when he was talking the tower. He was saying, I don't remember if it was when he was agreeing. He was agreeing to something, and he thought, like, doesn't really matter because once Tower sells us the lot, it doesn't matter what they do to him. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, that's a little ruthless. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, he knew. Roland, I would expect to think like that, but Eddie is usually a little more compassionate. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I think he's rubbing off on him more than he thought. Yeah. They, uh, I think he's just trying to show that, yeah, like they're all in too. So, um, Still not sure if Jake is, but, you know, he's along for the ride. <laughs> I mean, Jake kind of has no other options, right? Right. <laughs> I just don't know if he has the same fervor that Eddie and Roland do. I think yeah. Jake's mo more, like, analytical. Yeah, he kind of sees from other directions and goes, "Whoa, <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna need clarification on that." Just analytical has a lot of the oh. touch. Oh, 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 Elaine. I thought I said Blaine. Okay, that makes no, more sense. No, Elaine. Yeah, sorry. He is stronger than Elaine. I think. Right? Didn't Roland say that? Yes, definitely. Yeah. That's good old New York City blood. That's right. <laughs> way more empathy than anyone there. Jake? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think Eddie has a lot of empathy. Did you Maybe forget Eddie's what I said more... a minute ago? <laughs> no, no, I know. 
I think it's just him trying to make him. I don't really see that as Eddie that part. I'm not buying that part. Yeah, but that was a thought he had in his head. He didn't say that to anyone. I know. I mean, from the same thing, I'm not buying that part. That's not Eddie. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> he's trying to make him all in for the tower, so he's like, yeah, make, you know, that's more important. Like, Eddie, or not? Is he empathetic or emotional? I mean, both. I think he's both. He's definitely both. Yeah, because I think about him and Henry and like that whole dynamic, and I don't know. Yeah, and he was basically the caretaker for Henry, right? Yeah. Or it wasn't the other way. Yeah, no, he was taking care no, of No, he him. was, when, yeah. Yeah. When they first met, Eddie wanted to take care of Susanna. Right, right, I got it right. Mm -hmm. But Eddie uh, really needs to, to be taken care of, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then Eddie goes oh, to Toad Ash. <laughs> he goes to see... Uh, he go, Oh, he goes to tell... um. Tower to uh, uh, what's it called? Tell him the rose or tell him the store. And tell well, yeah, tell him to, to does he end up? Hey, they don't make the deal yet, right? He just has him hide, yeah, yeah. So, oh, um, uh, for Calvin Tower, who had begun life as Calvin Torrin, I can, but there's so there's confirmation there. I didn't realize that was actually he, he literally did change his name to Tower. I didn't understand that. Um, and I don't know what that means, but um, he's a little shithead. <laughs> he doesn't understand <laughs> the trouble he's in. Like you made a deal with a you know the mob basically, and now it's time to pay, and you think that everything's just going to be all right. Right. That's not how this works. Um, he's an idiot, and he has to and like a coward. <laughs> yeah. Why is he a coward? Just because, uh, I don't know. I remember them saying that about him in the book, that Deep No is the one that will help them more. Which one's the fat one? Is that Tower? Yeah. Wait, is it? I don't remember. Yeah, if that's, I feel like, yeah, he, yeah, I think it is Tower. Cause he's like, something, and I'm not, I'm gonna be careful saying that uh, because it's the way Stephen King says it. Uh, I don't really want to start calling people fat, even if they're imaginary. So. Um, <laughs> I guess it's okay if they're imaginary. So the, the, the fat bastard is Tower, and the regular guy is Deep No. <laughs> I I feel like uh, Deep No is more willing to. Help. Uh, yes, Tower is still being stubborn and stupid, and but Deep No wasn't there. Right? It was just Tower and Eddie, right? Yeah, Deep No was he was at the oncologist. <laughs> well, yeah, getting old. I feel like that might be one of them real life type things. <laughs> um but it, it, yeah, he was so annoying. Oh, and we got a great sage and I'm the junkie reference. It's been a while. Yeah. I also it's like never get to live those voices down. <laughs> Double ugly. No, I don't know if he should. I mean, Eddie wasn't the greatest guy in the world before we met him or when we met him. Yeah, but he doesn't need to have the voice of his past constantly haunting him. Not Not forever. Constantly haunting him, but yeah. (laughs) Not not Henry of all people. Right. Um, Yeah, well, we all know that Stephen King characters hear a lot of voices. Um, uh, anyway, I forget what the hell I was saying. Um, oh, we had a great Sage Edmund Junkie reference, and we had a... I highlighted it, and I don't remember where it was. There was um, Andy the Messenger robot, and it did not say many other functions, and I think that's the only time I've seen that. I don't oh, know wow. if that was an, an oversight, or uh, it was there on purpose. I just now kind of, like, after reading this section, I was like, is that supposed to... It's kind of like, I mean, I know... Jake or someone said it already.